You've unlocked a roundtable. Welcome to the Lost Levels Roundtable discussion of Creed. My name's Chris. With me, as always, is Alex. Hello. And with our roundtable discussions, we always go into a non-spoiler review, followed by the credits. And after the credits, we go into a full-blown spoiler discussion where we can kind of talk about the the film more freely and uh, talk about, you know... Some of the story beats that people may not want spoiled for them if they haven't watched the movie yet. Yeah, so that being said, we had the opportunity to watch Creed this weekend, and... Uh, so Creed is the continuation of the Rocky saga. Correct. Rocky Balboa, the, uh, with his friend, uh, Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle. No. Oh, oh no. Wrong Rocky. Shit. Wrong Rocky. Damn. That, that explains so much and why I was so lost during this movie. Yeah. It's not a cartoon either. It's not so. about a moose or a squirrel. No. Uh, so this one is about the former heavyweight champion, uh, Rocky Balboa, he serves as a trainer and a mentor to Adonis Johnson, uh, the son of the late friend and former rival Apollo Creed, hence the title Creed. And uh, so this is the continuation of the saga, and I don't know if it's the end of the saga or maybe just the beginning of a new uh, era to the Rocky Balboa um I mean, this has been going on since the 70s. Rocky has been around forever. It's just like I grew up on Rocky movies and uh, something that it's always been kind of like near and dear to my heart. I did not grow up on the Rocky movies. And in fact, this is the first one that I watched. Wow. Yeah. This is interesting. <laughs> so uh, to, to, we're going to get very two very different perspectives on this movie. I feel yeah because th- of that. This is actually kind of interesting because uh, one of the things that Alex and I do before we go into uh, reviews is we will watch the movie and we don't talk about it after the film. We, we try we, not to. We try our best not to indicate what we feel about the movie. Uh, so when we sit down, uh, whether it's immediately after the movie or maybe even a couple days later, we try to not play our hand, so to right, speak, right, right. or show our hand to, to uh, indicate what type of conversation this is going to be. Because we want this to be as free fluid as natural. We don't try to create any structure behind this or anything, or we have our ideas beforehand. It's like, you know what? We're just going to do this, and we're, we're going to see how, how it turns out. So I like that type of organic feel to these reviews, and I think that it gives it a little bit more of a genuine flavor to them. Uh, so that's why we kind of do it. The last review that we did, uh, the Hunger Games review, Alex did <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of indicate how he felt about it but after the movie. You were right, but not too much. Right. Uh, so... Uh, with Creed, I didn't know that this is the first movie yeah. in the Rocky uh, series, series that you've watched. So that's interesting. So this is definitely going to be completely different. So uh, I guess out of the gate, uh, st- we kind of talked about the story. Did you feel lost at all? No. No, not at all. I, I think they do a good job of setting up everything for anyone who isn't familiar with it. It's You, you understand that. You know, this is Apollo Creed's son. They they set that up at the very beginning, and you you get a good understanding of the relationship between Rocky and Creed through uh, the discussions between uh, Adonis and Rocky. You kind of understand, you know, how Creed and Rocky kind of were frenemies. I guess is a good. If you want to toss that phrase out there, they were they were great rivals, but they, turned they, they, into they a had, budding friendship. Yes, they had great mutual respect for each other. Yeah, essentially. Okay, so do you? You've heard of Rocky movies, obviously. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I I know enough of Rocky movies just through cultural osmosis, you right. know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I I understand the the whole concept of him, and you know he is you know an incredible boxer, and he he's always you know going, fighting tooth to nail and just like going the distance. That's the whole idea. Like, I spoilers for the first one, he he doesn't win the fight, but his idea that he he won all twelve rounds, right? I'm not gonna say anything. Okay, fine. You have to watch the movie and find I, out. I get, well, you just got them all on your Voodoo account, so maybe I'll do that this, <laughs> this weekend. I did. I uh, Voodoo had a sale on them. The did they even like, include the the more recent Rocky Balboa? They included all of the okay. Rocky movies, aside from Creed, obviously, because yeah. Creed just came out. But like, I was surprised they, they they had this bundle that was on sale. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna buy it because okay. I I do enjoy the series. I never really owned them because they, they've been on Netflix and like whenever I've wanted to watch them, uh, growing up, they were always on like the cable channels. Gotcha. And, and gotcha. I kind of just watched like Rocky Four probably a thousand times because it was always on cable. Yeah. Um. So. 
I guess all that being said, like, what, what do you what, what do you want to talk about here first? I'm I'm letting you lead this because oh, this is interesting. Okay. My my disconnect with this movie, I I I enjoyed the movie for what it was. I, it did not blow me away as a movie, but I enjoyed it for what it was. And I think my problem with it is the disconnect between uh, the Adonis character and me not quite getting his motivation I, I felt that was what held me back the most is he, this he he's so eager to prove himself as a fighter and i just it took me a long time to really get that and i don't think it the the point of it, it's really driven home until the last five to ten minutes of why he was trying so hard to be a fire or a boxer and my biggest disconnect came, came from that because i coming off of you know the more recent uh, boxing movie this year, Southpaw. I, I, I totally, I totally got that character's motivation. I understand. I understood what was at stake. While in this movie, I did not feel like there was much at stake for this character other than a name and a a legacy that he wanted to create for himself. Mm-hmm. And so I felt that disconnect because it just didn't feel as genuine. It felt almost selfish to agree until the very end. Okay. Even then, it, it was selfish, but it was selfish in the sense that it was not. It was it was more some for his himself, for his character, for for him accepting himself mm-hmm. as opposed to trying to prove he's hot shit. Right. That he he has that definite chip on his shoulder mm-hmm. uh, throughout this movie and i knew south Paul was going to come into this conversation it, it had to because I, I i we both really like that movie and it, mm-hmm. it's hard not to compare the two at this point yeah i mean you have two boxing movies that come out in the same year it's and uh one that we like you mentioned we, we both really enjoyed south Paul, and it's hard to like look look at south Paul, look at creed and, and try to separate the two but that's what we're trying to do here so uh you're right. I, I think the character motivation is uh, something that is very heavy. It's obvious, like it, it feels like it's just like, all right, this dude just is a rich kid who has a chip on his shoulder. But that's the way the movie goes. I mean, that's that's the whole point of it. Like you're supposed to feel that for that character right. throughout the duration of the and, film. And, and he, he he does try to separate separate himself from that and. And a lot of his anger comes from that association. Yeah, and uh, he's always been a fighter, uh, as we saw in the movie. And uh, he just never really had the formal training because no one really wanted to train him because they never took him seriously. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and I, I did get that, but like I said, it's just I never felt like anything was really at stake other than his name. Okay. So but, it's just... The, the, there felt very little gravity to the white to the fights that were happening. So, like with Southpaw, we definitely had character motivation in there. Mm-hmm. Do you think that watching Southpaw and then watching Creed kind of made you? F- f- uh, it, it made you feel this way, as opposed to like if you never watched Southpaw and you just watched Creed. Do you think that you still would have felt that for the character, or would it have been a little bit different? <sighs> No, I I don't think it would have been different because it, it took me a while to process this and why I felt the way I did about it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I really started comparing this and South Paul where I was like, oh, okay, I, I see what it is. It's because of this. Mm-hmm. And it, it wasn't that, you know, I was initially comparing them when I was watching the movie. It, it took me the time to sit down and really look at them separately to really see why Southpaw affected me more than this movie. Okay. So I, I don't think, you know, I would have felt differently if I haven't seen, if I didn't see a Southpaw earlier this year. All right. So what do you think about the, the characters? Do you, would you, th- you, obviously for Adonis, you, you have that feeling about him, like he, like his motivation as a character, you kind of suffered. You didn't, you didn't connect with it, so to speak. But what do you think about Michael B. Jordan? Oh, he did. He did a phenomenal job. Uh, I, I think he's he's a really great actor. And he's really showing his chops, and I think he has the potential to become uh, a, a real acting force. Um, and I mean, even though you know, like I said, I I didn't feel a lot of connection with his character. I I did feel the connection between his and Rocky's character 
I think the banter between them was really good and really started off started to come off genuine in a lot of the scenes. And I really appreciated the writing from there. Like it had heart behind it? Yes. Yes, it did. And you felt that uh, they did care about each other, even, you know, even when they did butt heads every now and then. It, it wasn't from a malicious place. It was a place of care, I felt. Yeah. I mean, you, even after there was like an emotional outburst or something like that, you immediately see the character like think about it and like, okay, you know, mm-hmm. why did I say this type of thing? And and, and you kind of get that from the writing. Uh, no, I, I completely agree. I, I think with Michael B. Jordan, like I really like him in a lot of things. Like he, he's been phenomenal in, in a lot of movies that I've watched. I'm going to erase Fantastic Four from that. I think Fox is going to try to erase it as well. <laughs> uh, just because of the fact that it's just like, um, yeah, that was just a bad movie that he was in. It could have been great for his career. Didn't turn out that way. I think he's not going to be hurt by it by any means. No, no, especially after this one. I think this is definitely putting him more on the map. I think he's going to become more of a household name after this. Yeah, definitely. He's going to get a lot more visibility. I'm like, I always liked him from, and, and anytime we talk about him, I immediately go back to uh, Friday Night Lights. But I, I really liked him in Friday Night Lights. Oh, see, I didn't even realize he was in there. I, I, I just recognized him from uh, Chronicle. That was, that was my first exposure exposure to him okay yeah he he's he's a good actor like there, there's some scenes where i think that like his uh lack of facial expression sometimes kind of hurts his acting shops like i don't know if i could see michael b jordan doing a a serious drama where heavy emotion from facial movements uh he, can be transparent like yeah th- there's some lines that are kind of weird because his face isn't showing that type of emotion that those lines carried. He does have a very stiff face. So I think that's one of the only drawbacks with Michael's performance. I think that like as a whole, he, he rocked uh, uh, Adonis. I thought that Adonis was awesome. He was a force to be reckoned with. Uh, I liked the way that he acted. He acts like, you know, his dad, essentially. Like, you haven't watched those movies. Right, so I have no comparison for that. And, like, his dad's, you know, he, he was always, like, you know, the the vocal outgoing the muhammad ali type of like you know okay very out like just boisterous just that type of character so he has his dad in him and i think that's why his character is like that too because he does have a chip on his shoulder okay. because of being in that creed lineage uh so i didn't like necessarily see those types of things where you're looking for character and motivation i kind of connected to the series as a whole and saw more of it from that aspect. Okay. So maybe that is a little bit different from my viewpoint, from your viewpoint. Right, right. And, you know, that, that's very valid. You know, I not knowing the the character of Apollo Creed, you know, I, I couldn't make that connection. So it's it's really interesting to see your view on that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Sylvester Stallone. Oh, he does a good job. Yeah, I, I really enjoy his performance in this. Uh, it's... You know, I'm, I'm so used to seeing him in stuff like Rambo and the Expendables, where he's this, this hard grizzled guy. And this one, he has he has much lighter flair to his character, and he, he's he's good at making jokes and everything like that. So I, I really appreciate him more seeing him in this Rocky Bubble character. There's a lot more charisma to him. You know what? Like it's, for you saying that, like if you watched a few of the Rocky movies, I think that you'd actually appreciate Sylvester Stallone a, l- a little bit more. And, you know that's the problem because I I haven't seen like you know I haven't seen any Rocky Balboa movies, so I just seen him as this hard chiseled action guy <laughs> and shit like Judge Dredd or like I said the Rambo movies and Expendables. Like you know that that is my perception of him. It's it doesn't go beyond that, so I, it was really refreshing to see him do this. Yeah, like uh, which kid, is weird because it's been going on for uh, since the seventies. But yeah, like honestly, it, it's the reason why I kind of like really appreciate Sylvester Stallone uh, as a person because of uh, his creation of, of Rocky Balboa. Like, it, it, he's a fighter that never gives up, never quits, and has like this heart of gold. Like he's just genuine, likable guy. Like, and, and he'll just sit there and try to help people out, and like. You know, he's not the smartest guy and, and you know that, but you just, you, you feel for him. You care about this character. And as going throughout the whole entire series, like you just, you, you 
you like this character. I mean, that's the phenomenon that Rocky is. Right. So let me ask you this. I mean, of course, throughout the other movies, he, he is the boxer. He's being trained. How was it for you watching him being the trainer in this one? Did, did, it, did it give you a new perspective on the character itself? Or it, did it... It didn't give me new perspective. It kind of carries on of, of Rocky. Uh, I think knowing older Rocky from the last movie, Rocky Balboa that came out Mm -hmm. where he, um, still became, he was like his last fight essentially type of thing. But you really got to see the other sides of him, like the aftermath of his life, you know, as the year has gone on. Cause like we just talked about, you know, from the seventies until now, Rocky's a lot older and, and like, you know, you see, uh, the people in his life from the beginning of Rocky till now, you know, some people not living, some people, whatever happens throughout the series, like, and how much of a toll that takes on the character and how much, like, it affects him. Mm-hmm. Like, just seeing him going to the, the, the graveyard and sitting there with, with, uh, you know, at the gravestones and just reading the paper and just kind of just talking out loud to them, like, they're never gone. Mm-hmm. It, it's like, it's just that emotional weight. Uh, is something that's kind of carried over throughout the Rocky series that I really appreciate. Um, it, it's something that I don't necessarily, I, I don't do that for people in my life personally, but it's something that like, I appreciate Rocky for. Okay. It's just this weird connection that I have to that character that I, I like seeing those little aspects of him and not just seeing like, oh, he's just this boxer guy. Okay, yeah, there, I, I can totally see that. There's the human element to it that I really appreciate. That's why I love the series as much as I do. All right, all right. So for for him now as the trainer, it's it, it's an interesting progression. It, it's something that like I like seeing the the second that I heard about this idea, where Rocky will train Apollo's kid, I'm like, oh, I'd love it. <laughs> immediately, like that's right. a, that that's cool. That that's a good way to carry. Uh, the the movie forward. I, yeah, I totally enjoyed the premise as well. Not having any relation to, it, I go. This seems like a natural progression. That this seems right. Yeah, and it's it's that nice natural progression that I really appreciate. That can start a new era or introduce a new era, a new legacy into this type of heartfelt uh, world. Mm-hmm. That I really appreciate. Like, you, we see other movies trying to do this where they introduce, like, a, a sibling or something like that. Like, we, we talked about it. Indiana Jones <laughs> okay. and the Crystal Skull. Die Hard. Die Hard, yeah. obviously. Um, where they're like, all right, our action stars are getting too old now. We're going to introduce their kids and hand off these potential franchises to their kids. And we'll still have the name. We're just handing it off. So these are the handoff movies. But those movies never worked. Because... Correct. Uh, for, you know, they weren't recepted well. They, they weren't done very well. No one cared about these people. Um, with Creed, uh, with Sylvester's heart behind it, I feel that this can be a successful handoff and can be a potential type of thing where, uh, if they feel it being, they could make a few movies for Creed and having Michael B. Jordan, the Adonis character, um, moving up fighting through the ranks and, and doing his thing uh, from an emotional standpoint. So I, I, I think that this was, out of those types of comparisons, this was the most successful out of those um, types of movies where it can be a handoff franchise. So Okay. Um, what, what else do you think about it? Um, you, you, know, you know, saying that I didn't, you know, feel much uh, weight to the fights you know I, I didn't feel like there was a lot of pressure behind them I, I didn't really get the the motivation behind them i still really enjoyed the fight scenes mm-hmm. i thought they were really well shot and they were they were very exhilarating yeah like especially the, the first major one he goes through you know it, it's cut in a way where it, it makes it look like it's one long shot and it's fucking it's directed beautifully from that like and i i was really impressed with that fight and, but, you know, even the, the bout at the end, you know, everything that this movie's building towards, you know, I, I found myself getting excited, getting really into it. That's awesome. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's, I mean, it, I still recognize the, the, the Rocky music. And when that comes in, you're just like, okay, yeah, th- this is <laughs> awesome. Like, let, let's do this. Let's fight. Let, let's punch the other dude in the face. This is going to be great. Like, mm-hmm. so it's, the fight scenes are really successful in that sense. It's, they're done really well. They're shot really well. A lot of the, lot of the movie's shot really well, but it's the, the the fight scenes are directed amazingly and really get you motivated. 
Which is key for a boxing movie. Yes. I just wish there was more of them. Because you only really have two major fight sequences and two smaller ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at this as almost like a traditional origin type of character type of movie. With with any boxing movie, you kind of have that formulaic approach to them where, like, you know, the person, you have the training montage scenes, you have the fight scene, maybe maybe two bouts in a, uh, in a movie or something, maybe just one. Maybe it's just, you know, character development, montage, fight. Right, right. So it's hard to really mess with that formula too much in these types of movies. But to still make them exciting is a, a, a huge um, payoff, or it's it's uh, kudos to the director right. who manages to to use the same formula that we've seen in so many different movies nowadays, and still be able to make it interesting. Yeah, yeah, uh, interesting. It, it if not a little predictable in some sense, uh, which we'll we'll get into probably a little bit later mm-hmm. in the the spoilers, but. Um, still, it, it's still exciting. You know, you're hoping what's going, you know, this is going to happen and seeing whether or not it does happen. It's, it's, it's really exhilarating. Yeah. It, and when it's done right in terms of like the perfect balance between drama, uh, and the fight and having that weight behind everything, it, it becomes like this this thing that you really you're nervous about like Mm -hmm. holy shit i'm watching a movie but i feel like this is an actual fight like that that makes me feel like the movie accomplished what it wanted to accomplish right like we talked about warrior a few years ago the ufc movie with uh, yes i I still never saw it but yeah you still never saw that right holy shit you're borrowing it uh (laughs) okay it's not on your voodoo uh you know i take it back it is on my voodoo okay yeah uh but yeah you need to watch that because um, that's a movie where you know exactly what's going to happen at the end. It doesn't hide it, the fact in the trailers, but the way that you care about the characters and like the excitement and the emotion behind mm-hmm. it, like holy shit, I'm antsy, like excited for this to happen in these movies. It, it's a, it's beautiful. So like I've always felt like Warrior is one of those movies that I put on like a, a high pantheon of movies because I love that movie so much. I, I've heard a lot of people say that as well. It, so. It's just it's great. And then with the Rocky movies, I always felt that that, that type of same excitement um, in a different way because I, I like I care about the characters more because I, I've you've grown, grown up, up with, with them. it, yeah. right? So I felt that same way when I was watching Creed. Like I, I still have that that nervous excitement as I'm watching the the bouts, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're definitely. Watch Warrior. We'll talk about it. Okay, like, that's such a great movie. Um, so yeah, um, w- what do you think about? See, my my gripe, I guess, is the one of my gripes in the movie was the the romantic subplot. Yeah, it's it's sweaty at best. Sweaty. Yeah, it's just, it's it's there, but I don't necessarily see it adding much to the motivation or the story of the character it's it's just like like i said it's at best a subplot you know it, there, there's no i don't feel like it was driving him at all and it is just it's just it it was very basic and the the conflicts in it felt cheap and the resolution felt even cheaper yes it I agree. I think that there is no weight behind it. Uh, there, there's no interest in it. There's like no development to it, uh, and it shows. Mm-hmm. It's a subplot that doesn't necessarily need to be there because it doesn't progress the story. It doesn't pro- you know help the character out right. by any means. What I would have liked more of them to, if if they were going to have a subplot going on, I would have liked to see more of a relationship between him and his mother. Yeah, because I think that could have been really interesting and that could have been explored. A lot more. Oh, yeah. And I wish they would focus on that more and take less focus off of this romantic one. Yeah. I think they added, uh, you know, I was thinking about this after the fact. I think they added the, ro- the romantic relationship because they didn't want it to just be a strict uh, boxing movie. They wanted to try to give another dynamic to this character mm-hmm. where he's just eat, sleep, gym. Rather than that, they're like, all right, eat, sleep, maybe a little bit of romance, then gym type of thing. So they try to. Th- add a little bit more to him to give him a little bit more dynamic right instead of being a one-dimensional character 
Uh, so they threw in this this love story subplot that doesn't necessarily work, and it's very by the numbers. It, it's something that like it, you put like okay, we're gonna throw a love story in here. So then you have like the yeah the, you have like. Uh, if you have no, a- I, I know exactly what you mean. I, <laughs> I agree with you 100% because, I mean, uh, this is a very character-driven movie, and so you're going to have those conflicts between these characters. You're going to have these relationships, and you're going to see, you know, how tough it is for for them to be maintained because of, you know, how, how their life is being torn in so many different directions and their focus and everything like that. And you, you get that. Mm-hmm. But... In the same, you get that in the most basic way to be delivered to you. Yeah, and it, it's it's to the point that it's so generic that as an audience member, you don't connect to it. You don't really care about the outcome of that relationship. It's just there on the screen for fifteen twenty minutes that could have been cut. Yeah, as you said, I uh, I do think that the mother relationship, especially after learning the lineage behind the mother uh, relationship mm-hmm. could have been a lot more interesting and something that could have been uh, developed a lot more and maybe will be in future movies I if they hope. do make movies. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if this is just going to be a one shot or are they planning to do something more with it? I think that this gives them the opportunity to, uh, to explore more. So we'll see uh, what Sylvester wants to do, but um, okay. So what, what else do you want to talk about here? I just, I don't know. I think we covered everything at this point that I could think to talk to. Okay. So without going into spoilers, this is a uh, final review then. Final review. Um, for, for me, I, like I said, it, it's, it's an enjoyable movie, but having not seen any of the movies before it, I felt very disconnected from it and it was hard for me to relate to it and appreciate it on, on a level as someone like you who has watched the movie and ha- does have that relationship with this series. So f- for someone like me, I don't think it's something you necessarily have to run to the theaters and see. You know, if it's on Netflix, cool, watch it. Um, but I, I, me personally, I do want to go back and, you know, watch the series, then come back to this movie and see how I look at it in a different light. Okay. So yeah, for someone who hasn't seen any of the movies before, it you could probably wait for like Netflix on it. it. It's not going. You're not going to waste your time watching it. You'll you'll still enjoy it, but you don't need to really put that much effort into seeing it. Okay. Yeah. For me, I think uh, being a, a vested member of the the Rocky um, phenomena, I would say that if you're like me, go check it out in the theater. If you're not like me, if you're more like Alex, uh, you know, go watch Southpaw. Go, you know, that you might like that because that gives you a little bit more character development. This one is like a, con- not necessarily a continuation, but it is in a way of Rocky's life mm-hmm. type of thing where I, I get those connections um, that somebody who is not familiar with the franchise might not. So for that type of person, you know, maybe I would say, you know, check it out on a, on a matinee or maybe, you know, rent it. Um, but it's still an enjoyable film. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I, I enjoyed myself. Yeah, and I think that uh, in terms of the Rocky series, I think Rocky Balboa was a better movie. Okay. Uh, but I think this is still a successful handoff. Which with, is rare to see. Yeah. So that that's kind of like what I think of it. Okay. You know, it's still a good movie. It's, it's uh, a, a good handoff movie. Um, so, yeah. Hang on to after for spoilers, but Alex, how can I reach you? You can follow me on Twitter. My name there is Alex Sandberg, A-L-E-X-S-A-N-B-E-R-G, or email me directly at the website, alex at lostlevel.com. What about you, Chris? I am on Twitter, twitter.com slash calm intensity, and uh, all of our information is on lostlevel.com. In the upper right-hand corner is a link to all of our social media. Uh, also, check us out on YouTube. The link's in there uh, on lostlevel.com as well. Uh, trying to do some cool shit on that. So uh, hope to hear from you guys soon. Uh, definitely give us your thoughts and critique, um, and see if you agree with us. See if you don't. Let us know. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. And uh, hang on for spoilers. 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 All right, you've been warned. This is the spoiler section. I 
can't believe everybody dies in this movie. That's crazy. Yeah. So no, wait, that didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it's well, where do you want to start, man? Like um, you said, predictable ending. So let's, right. Let's I mean, start just just the the point when they're the main adversary they was going to go against at the end. They made a point of saying, "Oh, this guy was never knocked down in the ring." I'm like, "Oh, okay, so." Even if he doesn't win, he's going to knock him down. Like there is going to be that that success in his career of knocking this one person down who was never knocked down before. Okay, and so you know that happened right at the end. I was like, "Yep, saw it. <laughs> it, it, it. It was coming." Uh, I did not expect him to win the fight just because it's you know from what I understand from the previous Rocky movies, he he didn't win you know in the first one either. So I, I was expecting that to continue on to this one okay uh yeah it i wouldn't look at it from based on history i i and ju- just the sense of practicality and what makes sense in a real world you're not going to have you know someone who's had that's he, they said he's had what 13 professional fights he was 15 to 0 in tijuana which I'm not really sure if that really counts. It doesn't. And they made a line from that where it's like, yeah, no one knows if that's from a, a huge a huge fight in Mexico or from a back room type of thing. Right. It doesn't matter to the audience. It's, they don't know. Yeah. So essentially it's, it's, it's this guy who is only had one really professional fight before this going against someone who's had 30. So you, you know how this is going to play out. Well, you hope that it's going to play out that way. Right. And in, in a real world sense. Right. You know, it's not, it's, it's not the typical feel good movie where, you know, this person gets plucked out of nowhere and overcomes all these differences and obstacles. Right. He, and he's not the, Neo the one. He's not like the boxer. To... Yeah. But you have those types of movies. Out there. Right. You know, you have those movies where, you know, out of nowhere, this person automatically beats the champ, and now they're the champion, and and blah blah. Mighty blah. ducks and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's not that type of movie, thankfully. You know, because it could easily be one of those movies, and and the Rocky movies are kind of like more, like the, it, it's not about the winning or loss. It's like the character development. Yes, and I think that's why I've really enjoyed that because anybody who's known me from Lost Level knows that I talk about character development to death. And that's the stuff that I relate to. That's the stuff that I watch over and over again. Mm-hmm. It's because I like to see characters. I like to see their development. I like to see that stuff. So the Rocky series obviously is a no-brainer for me because I've seen Rocky grow through for, through 30 fucking years. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, it, it's... I I... I don't know, like, if I really... I didn't think about it, like, oh, God, I hope he wins or God, I hope he loses... Just, I, I was just enjoying the moment. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty brutal. Like, his eye was jacked. Oh, up. God. <laughs> that that was an ugly-looking eye at the end. That was like, a nasty eye. Kudos to the makeup work on that. That yeah. was... I mean, I hope it was makeup work. I hope they didn't just bring <laughs> Michael B. Jordan back to back at him and punch in the eye repeatedly well, to get that look. It's based on a true story, I believe. No. God damn it, Chris. Stop doing that. <laughs> no. It's not? No. No. I don't watch boxing anymore, so there's there's people in it that are real. That's, that's true. That's true. So it could have been real. Yeah. Um, let's see. Outside of that, like, I mean, we have to talk about. It. I mean, it's not much of a spoiler because if you watched some of the more recent trailers, like you know, Rocky's sick, and it's like God, I hate that. Right? It annoys the shit out of me that they not, do not that. the fact that he's sick, but the fact that it's revealed during the trailers that, that you hate. Yeah, it, it it trailers need to stop that shit, man. They need to stop oh, showing totally. too much of the movie and like showing stuff. Like, uh, in the trailer, I didn't want to know Polly passed away. I didn't want to know that Rocky. I didn't know who Polly was, so I was like, whatever, don't give a shit. I know who Adrian was. Yeah, I, I got that because he. he but like Polly, I'm like, I don't know who that is. Whatever. But like, I didn't want to know that these people passed away, and it's like, come on, man. Like that would have been a an emotional thing for me to experience. In the movie, mm-hmm. and it's like, wait, what happened? Like, I I don't like seeing that shit in trailers, man. It it, it just it takes away and it cheapens the experience. Yeah. Um, so that bothers the shit out of me. But yeah, you're right. Uh, I, I it, it's unfortunate. 
But I mean, I, I think that was a a good element to the story because it is all about character growth and everything, and it sh- still it showed that you know despite Rocky's age and his experience, there's still more you can learn and there's still more you can fight for. So I think that was very essential to the that character development and to helping each other grow, helping himself and uh, Adonis grow. Yeah, and and that's why I like these movies because there's something behind them. Mm-hmm. There's heart behind it. It's like whenever you feel like giving up, there's still something to fight for. And that's like, I mean, Rocky's always been that kind of motivation for people. And like for me, like, you know, personally, it's like I I've appreciated Rocky-isms <laughs> throughout life. And like uh, I think what, one of my favorite ones is is one of the recent ones in Rocky Balboa, the the movie before this. Yeah. That, you know, he talks about like he has a, a, a talk with his son. And, and, uh, I, I don't want to, I, I can't quote it, but he's basically saying, like, it's not, in life, it's not how hard you get hit, it's how hard you can't, or no, damn it, what is it? No, uh, how hard you can hit is how hard you could take a hit. Yeah, and then keep going and keep moving forward. Okay. Um, so that, that's basically what it is. Like, I, I love those type of Rockyisms because it's true, because mm-hmm. life is hard. And, and seeing that type of character just keep moving forward no matter what, uh, I it's inspiration to me. No, oh, yeah, totally. It's and you know that's what these movies do well is inspire people. Yeah, and that that's why I love this damn series, and that's why you know, like with Creed, I, I think it's it's a it's a solid movie for the franchise. Um, but yeah, I really didn't like the love story. No, not at all. <laughs> like it was just... it, it was there. It's okay. He he punched some dude at. A gig she was opening up for, and apparently he was some big wig. He, she was opening for them. I guess they were musicians. Mm-hmm. I thought they were just basic gang thugs because they looked that way. But um, yeah, it was just like okay, whatever. Like like I was fine. Like oh, you guys broke up. It's cool. You got other things to focus on. <laughs> yeah, and and her having like a listening disability. Yeah, that didn't play out. Uh, it doesn't play out. But it's just, it's, it, it feels like it's like, all right, like I was, I was kind of saying in the non spoiler section where it's like, all right, we need to add something to this character's dimension. All right, love story, done. All right, under, like, and they have it like on this big bulletin board and then like uh, at the top of his love story, then they have like all these little note cards underneath it and like, what can we do to make it more interesting? And then one of them's like, uh, disability. A musician who who's losing her hair. Yeah, so then they're like, all right, disability would be good. He can relate to that somehow. Uh, add that. Yeah. So then she has a hearing problem. <laughs> it's like, it, it just feels like that was like a note card on a mm-hmm. bulletin board when they're drawing out the story. It didn't feel like it mattered. It it right. didn't matter to the character or anything like that. Um, she was just a gifted musician as is. She didn't need to have that. It, it just, it, it didn't work. No. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot more stuff they could have played with. Obviously, uh, his coming from California into Philly. I mean, they, they did try to get him into the Philly culture, and really try to show the love of the city. Yeah, the, when he goes on the date and takes him to the the cheesesteak place or whatever. The cheesesteak, and then he's you know running with the the, the motorcycle dudes. That, and... I didn't like that scene. <laughs> that that scene was stupid to me. It, it felt very. Very over glamorized and just surreal to an extent. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Um, it fits with the 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 theme, or or it's it fits with the the Rocky series. Okay. However, I do agree with you that it felt shoehorned to try to make it feel like it's a Rocky movie. Okay. As opposed to it being a genuine type of thing. Uh, what we've seen in the past in Rocky movies. This felt more shoehorned. It's like, all right, Rocky movie, you need to have these tropes in here. Um, let's add them. Gotcha. And that's how, what it felt like. Okay. So I agree. I definitely agree with that. Uh, what else is there for spoilers? Um, no, there's really not much to really go into spoilers. Like, he fights, he loses, but he knocks the guy down. That's, I mean, th- th- this is so character driven there's not really a lot of plot points to hit yeah i did did like how he got his ass knocked out in in 
uh, by that one dude at the very beginning. Oh yeah, and he loses his Mustang. Yeah. Yeah. Or okay, the other the other part that kind of bothered me in the final fight, where he gets his shit rocked and falls face first onto the mat, just looking like he's completely unconscious, and then all of a sudden does a Hulkster. I feel no pain. <laughs> jumps up <laughs> like it's wrestling type of thing, right? And he's like, "I'm good," because he has like the the rev- the, the realization or the the life flashing before his eyes type of moment, right? 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 Where it's like, dude, you would you looked like you got rocked. There's no possible the, way they kind of hang. They, they even like hang the lampshade on that one. Where like, oh, he got up like a man possessed. Like it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of bullshit. They got up that quickly <laughs> like th- there's there's a person getting up, up like a man possessed and then there's jumping up like you just got shot with uh epidephrine or <laughs> and, and uh, you're the, it's a turns into like a, a movie type of trope thing and that's yeah. what it felt like it felt like a wrestling type of thing where like this guy's getting beaten to death and all of a sudden he still gets up and he's Feels no pain, like he hasn't just gotten beaten for five rounds or whatever. Right. Um, so that kind of bothered me a little bit. Yeah, uh, I agree with you there. But then again, his eye was really fucked up after that. <laughs> <laughs> that eye was hard to look at. Oh. I am glad the final scene of the movie, uh, when they go climb up the steps... Uh, kind of like the passing of the torch type of moment that they have at the very end. His eye is back to normal size. They didn't leave the makeup on. No. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how long he had to pass. Uh, at least a flight from England to Philly. No, but his eye, his eye looked a lot better. Yeah. Like that was like a couple of weeks after the yeah. fight. Like, yeah. <laughs> God, I wonder how long it would have taken for that, something like that to actually go down. Like I, I wonder if he's had permanent loss. You would think that that's yeah. Uh, like I like vision uh, problems because his eye was jacked. Oh god, that's gross to look at. <laughs> uh, yeah. Overall, it's still an enjoyable movie despite what like we're saying about it. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Do you have anything else, or are we can end it? Uh, I think we're going to end it. All right. Well, thanks for listening again. We really appreciate it, guys. And if you uh, saw Creed, have an opinion on it, we'd love to hear from you. Just shoot us a, an email or. Uh, follow us up on Twitter and, and let us know what you guys thought. We'd appreciate it. Right. Bye. <laughs>